Uh, so first off, can you just tell me a little bit about um, your general feelings on becoming county historian? I'm absolutely thrilled to uh, be county historian here um, and serve um, citizens of Putnam County because I think the historical treasures are fairly extraordinary in this county. Um, and I think Dennis Costelli was a beloved figure. Um, and I'm really excited to take his vision and mission and move it forward, um, particularly with regard to some of the uh, emerging digital technologies that really enable um, history to be a lot more portable and its interpretation. So um, I'm really looking forward to getting started on some of that kind of project. Okay. What is it about his, uh, history that interests you? Uh, well, I, <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, I've probably been a historian in training since I was a kid. Um, uh, I think it, f m more than anything else, it's being able to tell stories with objects um, that link to people's lives and people's personal stories. Uh, and that's one of the reasons that I think these uh, public history jobs here in New York State are so important because uh, we can save and preserve and get people to think about their histories, their family histories, and then hopefully um, the county history and regional history and national history and how all that links up um, to the bigger picture. Um, but I think it has to start right at home, and that's one of the things that I'm really excited about um, having a go at. Um, my favorite period is um, the 19th century. I've done the most work in the second half of the 19th century. Um, but I can teach 17th century to the present with about 15 minutes notice, um, generally speaking. So, um, And I really fell in love with objects um, of material culture or just everyday kind of, you know, like everyday life sorts of objects, the kinds of stuff that everybody interfaces with all the time. Um, when I was a really little kid, because my parents collected um, Victorian antiques, so I was... Um, me and my sisters were taken to antique shops and museums and galleries from the very beginning. Um, and that's, I think, where I, where my love of the 19th century comes from, particularly. Um, but uh, I studied, I'm an academically trained historian, um, uh, got a master's degree at NYU, uh, was trained in curatorial practice at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, um, and then did a, did a fair amount of work um, it, museum work um, after that uh, master's degree and um, and then really wanted to take my work to the next level so I did a PhD um, in uh, America ostensibly American history in the 19th century um, at the University of Brighton um, with a specialty in design history uh, I wrote about mail order catalogs 19th century mail order catalogs in department stores and um, <clears throat> finished that work in 2004 and um, didn't I, I haven't I haven't had a traditional sort of academic trajectory. I've done a number of other kinds of projects, um, web-based projects. I started working on web-based projects in 1994. Uh, so, um, if that gives you any sense of the, my background there. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit more about um, your background in design. Um, oh, sure. There was a communication and dis industrial design in your work. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've been teaching design history um, since 1990 um, for the longest at Parsons School of Design uh, and then for a couple of other design schools too. I taught at Pratt for a bit and um, most recently at Carnegie Mellon University. Um, started out teaching the history of um, uh, clothing and textiles actually uh, and largely got into that because of the history of technology. I kind of um, sort of fell backwards into it. Uh, and ultimately that kind of links up to um, my father and grandfather taking me to um, those sort of county fair expositions of antique machinery running. Um, so I got really fascinated by old machines and how they worked early on. Um, I was kind of broken as a child in that way. <laughs> but, um, uh, and it just, you know, it's, I think it's interesting to see the trajectory of those things and how you rebel against them at some point, and then at a certain point you go, oh, this is just who I am. Um, but I think that that ultimately is where it goes back to. So um, so I've been teaching those things. I, I've, I've taught the history of, uh, like, almost all kinds of design, really, more or less. Um, I'm particularly interested in graphic design and industrial design because 
they have such a broad impact on everybody's daily life, although people may not be aware of those things. Um, graphics, advertising, newspapers, type faces. Most, most people, I would say, generally speaking, don't think about where those things have come from or that they have histories. Um, and that's in some ways, I think, what makes them so interesting because it's good design if it just works and you don't think about it. It's when we, it's when it's designed less well, I think, and it makes you go, I can't read that at all. Um, you know, in terms of typefaces or that sort of thing that I think it becomes somewhat problematic. But, um, and industrial design, um, again, I've done a fair amount of work when I was at Carnegie Mellon. I wrote the uh, history of their, they were celebrating the 75th anniversary of their industrial design um, BA. I think it's a BA degree. They were one of the very first um, four-year degrees in industrial design history. Um, so, uh, and that and that project was absolutely fascinating. I've done a couple of um, institutional history projects like that. Um, again, I think what largely drives me is the discovery of documents and objects that you couldn't really make up and, and the kinds of things, the, the, sort, the sense of understanding that you wind up getting uh, uh, as a result of an, in, particularly an institution or a program's history. Um, they thought that program really maybe went back to the early 1930s, but in fact there were classes as early as the 19-teens. Um, and, um, and in that case we found um, a student petition that, you know, where, I don't know, 30 or 40 students had actually signed and asked, you know, had gone to the president of the university and had asked for, specifically asked for this program. Um, and I think that kind of synergy between student activism and actually getting a program is pretty rare. I don't think you could do that to a college president these days and um, have much luck. Can you tell me a little bit more about um your PhD thesis, uh, you had mentioned it was the, uh, the catalog? Sure, I got really interested in um, mail order catalogs again through, uh, I started to find them uh, in museum collections where I was doing research um, for a number of jobs. Um, I had done some work, um, uh, ran the shop uh, at for the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade um, because I designed clothes for um, theater and kind of entertainment projects uh, before I before my academic career and um, there was a small collection of mail of their mail Macy's mail order catalogs in the special productions department um, that you know somebody said hey have a look at these you're interested in this stuff um, and I just kind of fell in love with them and then the more I uh, the more I looked at things, the uh, patterns began to emerge. And again, that's ultimately what his, what your job as a historian is, is to recognize those patterns um, as they fit in much larger frameworks <clears throat> uh, interpretively. And uh, as it happened, um, I was... Uh, I was at the at the Smithsonian's American History Museum um, talking to the 19th century uh, curator of clothing at that point in time, Shelley Foote, and she said, I want to show you a couple of these garments, and they were women's robes, um, the kind of robe that a middle-class woman would have worn to breakfast if somebody else were fixing it for her, um, ultimately to stay warm because houses were still relatively cold um, before central heating in the 1870s, these early 1870s, these robes were from. And she said... They were consumed from a woman in Trenton, New Jersey, and a woman in San Francisco, but they're ostensibly the same garment. And I and at that point, I had looked at enough catalogs to know that they had. Um, there was actually a broad, a fairly broad national market by then. Um, again, because of the red transcontinental railroad and um, improvements to uh, um, communications and infrastructure more broadly. Uh, but the extraordinary thing was that those two garments really wound up being the backbone of um, that dissertation because what I wound up finding was that um, department stores were actually manufacturing uh, women's garments on site and and then they would take other, peop other stores 
um, catalogs and manufacture their stuff too. <laughs> so there was a fair amount of liberal borrowing, mm -hmm. if you will, as there still is, I think, in that, particularly in that business. Um, and, uh, and as it happens, I think these two particular garments that are still at the Smithsonian um, in American history um, exemplify that they were, they were just purchased from a mail order house. Um, because because if you were to have given two women on opposite sides of the country the same materials, they wouldn't create garments that looked that looked as right. similar as these did. Um, and then I actually found in mail order catalogs, um, Lord and Taylor was selling. Uh, they were illustrating a robe that looked very very similar to um, the one uh, to these robes. The unfortunate thing was that all of the documentation, the paperwork, had been lost. Um, it's very rare um, that you get not unknown, but much rarer that you get actual receipts with things. Um, although as I was um, doing museum archival research, um, I did find a fair amount of um, bills, although not necessarily attached to, to garments um, in the Warshaw's, uh, the archives at, at American History. So there's so much, especially by the late 19th century, there's so much documentation that's out there knocking around um, that it was actually um, and so many catalogs extant that it was actually a really, really cool project. So I just took data. Um, by the time I got around to doing my PhD, relational databases had entered into the picture. So it was really easy to um, collect massive amounts of information and then have a look at them by running keyword searches. And um, that's really, on lots of levels, what saved my research because I could, could cast my net really broadly and then more tightly focus it with um, sort of mine the data, if you will. Uh, could you tell me a little bit about some of the skills you believe you'll bring to the position? Sure. Um, I think one of the one of the first things that I want to have a look at is uh, I want to do some digital mapping projects um, so that um, Putnam County residents and other people visiting Putnam County will be able to much more easily uh, access um, some of the treasures that we have here. Um, and I think, f for example, one of the things I'd like to start with are just the historical markers. Um, get get do a program in Google Maps, say, for example, um, so that people can, um, I think, not just go and look at things, but be more aware of the environment that they probably drive past every day anyway, um, and that sort of thing. Um, I think there are a lot of uh, potential um, projects that I've been thinking about, and the rest of the staff, again, has been, um, I have a really dedicated staff here who's been working, uh, most of them, for many years in this department. Um, I was hoping actually to start uh, in time to launch a project um, to celebrate the um, the veterans of World War I because of the centennial um, th by this November, but we didn't wind up getting that, uh, getting that launched. Maybe by the end of the year we can actually um, do a little bit of lip service and then by next year, Memorial Day or Veterans Day, we'll have a, some more um, programming for um, f for that commemoration. Um, I think in, in terms of the other skills that I bring, um, I've been really committed to digital humanities projects as they've been evolving. Um, and I think that a lot of counties have, or, or several counties, there are some, some nice test counties. Um, Calvert County in Maryland, for example, um, has uh, produced uh, some some driving tours that you can download to a tablet um, and then participate in in any number of levels. So I'd like to do some grant writing and um, try to do some larger scale projects like that um, to capture uh, the history of this county on any number of fronts. Um, there's so much really good industrial history here, um, the mills and the mines. Um, there's great agricultural history here. Um, uh, and I think my background in the history of technology um, will will help to just connect what's happening locally with the bigger picture. Um, the river, you know, the history of the river and um, uh, what, the, the, what the Hudson has done for this region historically. Um, it's really exciting, so. Um, and I first, you know, when I was when I was living in Manhattan, when I was in, at NYU, I first came up to Cold Spring, and that was my first foray into Putnam County. And got off the train station, and remember thinking, oh, 
this is so amazing. This is such a lovely 19th century town um, on so many levels. So um, I'm absolutely thrilled to um, have this county as my purview historically in terms of content. Actually leads to my next question. Mm. Um, can you tell me a little bit about, um, I, I understand you haven't actually been in the county all that long. Um, a little bit about where, where you've been before and um, what brought you here, what made you want to stay here and work here? Sure, absolutely. Um, well, uh, the academic life is a fairly nomadic one, as you uh, probably know. Um, so I, start, I, I mo a lot of my career was, was spent in Manhattan. Um, the first, I don't know, mo I, I like to sort of think the formative years of my adult life were uh, in Manhattan. So I lived there for about uh, not quite 20 years. Um, and uh, then actually um, went and lived in England for three years. Um, and I think that uh, I did a postdoc at the University of Hertfordshire. And I think actually living abroad gives you a really fascinating perspective on um, your own country. A and I think it's one of those things that it's it's such a it, it's such an extraordinary experience that everybody really should get to do it because uh, because I don't think you ever look at your own sensibilities nationally uh, the same way again after ha looking at it from the outside. Um, and um, so that was a fairly extraordinary experience. I came back actually in 2007 um, to uh, and moved to Pittsburgh, um, started uh, teaching at Carnegie Mellon. And um, uh, again, largely to teach design history there and the history of technology. And um, moved here because my part, I met and fell in love with a lovely man who teaches at Pace University and has lived here for about 17 years. So it was actually the personal, not the professional, that brought me here. Um, and we started uh, going to see um, the historic houses. My first trip here, he took me to Boscobel. And I think that that's another one of the... Um, aspects of this county that th the historical resources are so extraordinary here and a house like Boscobel is extraordinary in terms of federal period architecture but it's also an amazing restoration story so um, th I think there's so much going going on in terms of programming that I'd really like to fold under the umbrella of this office and um, make for example the Putnam County Historians website be a place that lists what's going on in terms of historical interest all over the county um, and and again develop some programming um, develop some talks to take to you know that will be available to any group who wants to book them and that sort of thing uh, so um, I don't know where everybody's buried yet, but uh, <laughs> but I'm a pretty quick study in that way. Um, and I think there are also, you know, the the reservoirs. I think there's there's so many stories that um, can be told here about the politics of water and um, and for example the uh, the it, as again as I have. Um, as I've been talking about this job, you know, various people have said, oh, my father actually worked at the, um, the resorts that were um, in the county. And so, like I say, the more I talk to people, the more potential oral history projects on, I can see unfolding um, in the future because there, it just seems like there's so much stuff was going on here, so. Okay. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about uh, your impression on uh, Dennis Costelli? Dennis Costelli. Uh, I didn't know him well. I think he was an extraordinary person. Uh, I think he, I think his love for this county was amazing. And I think that these are big shoes to fill. And have you uh, spoken to any other uh, legislators or the other town officials, um, gotten more in touch with the uh, politics? Um, not, uh, n n uh, they've been sort of busy given the election, the recent <laughs> elections, right. um, but, I, but I know that Mary Ellen O'Dell has, uh, has been a really big supporter uh, of the historian's office. And I think that she, um, her vision is to really get the historian's office working with the, the Department of Tourism um, and Libby Pataki's office. And I think that's a great idea because um, 
again because there are so there's so much to do here so i i'm hoping that we can get people to come to putnam county and then offer them really interesting program and get them to come back um, or to get them to stay for the weekend and um, visit sites and um, provide walking tours or driving tours and that sort of thing so. then um any other thoughts you might have any other anything else you want to say to the rest of the county if people have objects or artifacts or really great family histories, um, email them to us because because I think, like I say, I'm all about getting uh, getting history from the people, um, and I also think that I'm I'm particularly interested in going out and talking to people and having, you know, like having some informal um, history sessions where, say, people meet for a cup of coffee at breakfast time or for a cocktail at the end of the day um, or those sorts of things um, but I think that uh, whenever I can carry the banner of um, getting people interested in history I will be there and doing that um, so I'm absolutely thrilled to have this new job and think about how to present um, the cultural resources the historical resources that Putnam County offers to everyone